Hey guys, welcome back. So today I'm going to be showing you how you can modify any type of progress bar to hold increased capacity. So if I hit play here, you can see this bar is progressively getting larger. And this will work with any type of progress bar that you're using. It doesn't matter which way you're filling it. As you can see here, it can go left, it can go right. And it even works with the um, vertical progress bars. So if you want to fill top to bottom or bottom to top, you can still get an effect like that. And here, just for good measure, I'll show you guys the center fill too. So this is great for anything that you guys would have. Um, if your ability or health or ammo capacity, whatever it is that you're um, displaying to the player with a progress bar, if it can increase its capacity, then this is a really good node to use for that. And let me guys, let me go through a little bit about what this does. So this is the custom node here, and it's attached to an actor component, this dynamic fill bar. And all you do is give it the widget reference that has the progress bar inside of it. So here is my widget reference, has five different progress bars. And I just feed that in right here to the widget reference. You feed in the actor component so you can call this. Delta ability is how many units of whatever you know, you're know you dealing with, so we'll just say health, um, that you want your bar to change. So if you start off with 100 units of health and you have delta ability of 100, your max capacity will be 200 then. And it will maintain the same ratio. If you guys notice, I'll do the left to right bar again here. This starts off with 100. Um, current ability and 100 for the max. So when we add 100 here in the delta ability, the bar should be twice as long. And as you can see, we start off at 100 for 100, and now we're 100 for 200, and the percent has updated accordingly. The rate here, this just determines how fast the bar will increase. This is more of a visual. Um, if you put it at like 50,000, the bar will basically just appear completely at the right size, you see. But if you want it to get more of like a growing effect, you can slow it down, say 250 or something like that, and you can watch it slowly power up. And the last thing that you can do here is this save ability bar and it will just pass out the same struct that you guys put in. So in order for this to work, you do have to have your abilities um, contained within this struct. It won't work on a free variable, like if I just create health like this and have it as a float and try and plug that, it, it won't work. Um, you do need to use this struct, but it's very simple and it just has the current value, the max value, and the name of the progress bar. And this save ability function here, it passes the exact same struct out. But the nice thing about it is there is some hidden um, variables in there that you don't access through blueprints. But it will, um, through C++, you can access them. And what it does is it saves the size of your progress bar. So I have this little thing set up. If I let it run, we'll change our progress bar. We'll wait five seconds. We'll save. And this is just for demonstration purposes, you guys wouldn't actually set all of these things equal to each other. Um, we'll wait a couple seconds, I'll open a new level, and then when it comes back, um, that new level will just kick us back into this first level. We'll get our game instance reference, we'll set our ability to the one that we saved in the game instance over here, that's what we're doing here. We'll make the widget, we'll add it to the viewport, and then we'll check the ability here, and you'll see for this one, if the current equals the max, that means we didn't expand the bar. That's when we call this thing. But the second time we come back to the level, we'd have already done this. So our current and max value won't be equal. It'll come here. We'll call change ability bar again, but the delta will be zero. So we're not going to get any um, bigger of a progress bar. And then we're going to wait a couple seconds, and I'm just going to show you that you can still change the value of you know, your health or whatever this ability is outside of this function. You don't need to use this. 
So we'll just take the struct and the current value and I'll subtract 50 and we'll set it. And then I have this function to update the bar. Um, and this is within our widget here. You see it just has a regular set percent and you give it the progress bar. And again, I've hooked them all up because it's just better for testing. So we'll let this run through. You see here it's reached the end. We're going to save. And now as we come back to the same level, I don't know if you guys saw that, but it went back um, to the 50% mark. And then we subtracted uh, 50 units. So we started at 100, and it was 100 for 100, so it was full. Show this again. 100 for 100 is full. We added 100 units. Now it's 100 for 200, so it's half. And you see where my cursor is, this is where the bar was, and then we subtract 50. So now it's 50 units out of a bar that can hold 200. All right, and that's basically um, everything that this node can do for you. All right, so I'm going to show you guys how you can add this code to your project so that you guys can use it for whatever you guys want. In order to do that, we're going to open up a new project. Okay, now that we have a new project, what we're going to do is right-click in the content browser. We're going to create a new C++ class. We're going to scroll down here to Actor Component. We'll hit Next. And for the name, we're going to call this dynamic underscore fill underscore bar. If you name it like this, it'll save you some copy-pasting later, but you guys are free to name it whatever you want. Um, so then we'll create a class here and we'll wait for Visual Studio to compile. Okay, now that Visual Studio has compiled, what we're going to do is start here in our dynamic fill bar .h, the header file. And what we're going to do is take this part that says class add code. This will be the name of your project. We'll just control C and we'll paste it up here out of the way. And then we're going to come in here and we're going to take everything from the first line all the way down to this last curly brace and above this dashed line here. We'll copy it and we're just going to paste it here. Now we're going to take this line here, control X, and we're going to scroll down to right here where it says U class class group class code test and we're going to replace this line. So now it should be the name of your project here. Now we're going to go into the C++ file and we're going to take everything from below this line control C Control A, and just paste it right in here. And if you guys named uh, your actor component dynamic fill bar like I did, this will already be correct. If not, make sure that this is the right name, um, whatever you guys named your component. And same thing for all of these U dynamic fill bar, they will need to be renamed um, to whatever you called your component and you can get that from right here in the header file. And one last thing, if you guys, if this is one of the first tutorials you're watching where we messed with the UMG, you will have to go here um, under your project name and look for the source file and then the name of your project again. And you see where it says add code dot build dot CS. So because we're modifying UMG and Slate, you will need to have this um, added. So after input core, just have a little comma and put um, the quotes, capital UMG, end quote, just like I have here. And then uncomment this line right here where it says private dependency module names dot add range. You're going to need to get rid of the forward slashes here like this. So that way this line lights up. All right. And then we're going to hit 
Yes. And we're going to hit build. And we will wait for Visual Studio to build our solution. OK, now that it's done building, you should see one succeeded down here. If something failed, you either messed up something with the copy-paste, or you have a different name and you didn't find all of the um, places where you have to rename your project. All right, so we can get out of Visual Studio now. Close this. And we will go back to our tutorial here. And what we're going to do is, I've already set up a widget, and it just has a progress bar in here. And it's just going to fill from left to right. And I have in here our third person character. And we're just going to create this widget and add it to the viewport. So in our third person character, I'm going to add a component. And I'll search for dynamic fill bar. And now I can drag this component out. And I can call the function changeability. And now I'm just going to feed it the reference to our widget here. I'm going to hook that up after we add it to the viewport. And if we go in here and we'll see, let's make this size 500. I'm going to right click here, promote to a variable, my ability. And we'll just start it out with 100 units for the current and max. And for this progress bar name, if we go into our widget, you see I've named it my ability here. You can just copy that, paste it right here. And for our delta ability, I will give us another 100 units. And our rate will be 250. So this should double our progress bar. Hit compile and save. And if we hit play, and you guys can see our progress bar filling up. And now it is twice the size that it originally started at. All right, guys, I hope you thought that was helpful. And if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And stay tuned for more tutorials. All right, see you guys later.